Okay, let's actually create one of my absolute favorite effects uh, when it comes to materials and shaders, which is this parallax, which basically fakes depth on a texture. You can probably see it even better over here, where we just have a few planes. And as they move, it seems like there is something deeper inside the texture. If you look at this like Voronoi here, it's like there's something behind the individual lines, like they're copied over here. Or even here where it looks like there is some kind of mist or a nebula behind this plane. So making the, uh, creating this material is actually fairly easy. Um, it's just a little bit unconventional, so let's get right into that. Uh, let's just create a new, don't need to save here, just go into a completely new, completely fresh Blender file, just delete everything with A and X, and then we're gonna add a plane. I like to go over to the shading space, usually go into rendered view, uh, I like to select a nice world color, Nice and dark, yay. All right, let's create uh, a new material for our plane. Delete uh, our BDSF over here. And let's just add some kind of placeholder uh, texture. I usually like to go for just some Voronoi. And there we go. We have a nice and colorful plane. Oh, let's put that up a little bit. Something like this. Yeah, I like that. All right, so our first goal here is to give us the effect that the surface or our texture here is going into the depths, which means when we basically look around the plane, it kind of moves based on from what angle we look at. So what makes this material so unconventional is that we actually do not start with texture coordinates here, but we're actually starting with the geometry node. And we're gonna add a, it's on a vector I think, yes, a mapping. And we just put that in here and then everything disappears. But now we're gonna use the position of uh, the geometry node and put that into the vector. And that basically creates um, a mapping based on the geometric position on the object, which brings back our texture again. So to move this uh, mass of colors over here, based on our view angle, um, we actually use the incoming over here and put that into the location. And when you now move around, you see all kinds of stuff happening. It looks a little bit like how we want it, but there are a few problems. First of all, the cells seem to like go all over the place. And that's because we're using a 3D texture, but for this effect, we actually need a 2D one. So now if you look around, it kind of looks like what we want, but something's missing. And that's actually depth. So right now it's just seems to be moving, but it's not very convincing. So to add depth, we can simply multiply with a vector math node. Where is it? Multiply, multiply, there it is. And then we're gonna multiply that by a value, or very specifically a negative value. And if you like lower this now, you will see the whole thing seems to like lower into itself. And when you look around now, it's doing it. It's doing the thing we want. If we go even deeper here, it seems like to be farther away. And it seems like it's already working, but it's not actually, because at the moment uh, we just have this completely flat plane, but if you actually start to rotate it, Something happens, something we do not want. It stretches. If you look around, it seems really weird and oh my God, what is happening? So what's basically happening here is if I um, turn this away, 
is that this projection currently works only in world space. And once we actually start rotating our, our plane, uh, the projection basically happens from the Z coordinate, so from up and down. And as we basically go parallel with the Z here, it goes all sorts of crazy. So we could simply fix that by um, changing from world space into object space. So we could go into vector and then vector transform and simply set that to point. So it sets from world to object. And now as we look around, when we turn this around, it basically does what we want. And you could stop here and just call it a day. This is a parallax, it looks fine. But there's a different problem now. If we actually add a cube and put this material on this cube, now we have this problem. It's still, it's still projecting from the Z, um, but now in object space. So object space also isn't quite what we need for this to work. So what do? Well, first of all, we get rid of this vector transform. What we actually need is a space that is based on the normal of our objects, or more specifically on the tangent of our object which basically is the quote-unquote 3D space uh, our textures reside in. And to do that, we need to use a little handy-dandy uh, math calculation. We basically have to construct a tangent vector. Now, I'm not going to bore you with, uh, like, with math equations and anything like that, so I'm just going to build the notes for it, and you can follow along. Um, if you don't want to do that, there is a little link to a Gumroad uh, package that you can just download and use a little note group that I built for you. So you can just use that if you want. But if you want to stick around and follow me, that's even better. All right. Um, so for tangent space, what do we need? So we can actually, if we look here, we actually have a tangent node here. And since we want to basically use a three-dimensional one, we actually need to use the UV map, which means this effect will only work if your objects are UV unwrapped. Um, so if, if you use, use this and nothing happens, it's probably because there is no UV map on your object. And now we need to construct a vector, which means we need to combine X, Y, and Z. And we need exactly four math nodes to do this. So if you go into computer, math, uh, wait, no, not math nodes. I'm not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean vector math nodes, actually. And more specifically, we need dot product here. So our first dot product over here, well, that we need this mapping node, put that into here, and the tangent. And this will be our x value. Now, for the y value, we actually need two of these, with the first one being a cross product. And that cross product will be between uh, our normal over here from our geometry node. We use the normal. And again, our tangent space. And then we plop that into the dot product over here and use again our mapping from over here, and that will be our tangent y. And for our tangent z, we just need another dot product over here, which will just be the mapping over here, and the normal again. Whoop! There we go. And that will be our z. And that's already our tangent space built up. So now if we just put that in here, it looks like this. And now if we add our cube back and put on our material, ta-da, it's working. Hooray. Thankfully, all the um, primitives from Unity already have a UV map, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, but yeah, so 
this is basically a very simple, very common way of just having some fake depth in your textures. So what you could do with that now is if we take that Voronoi and we put on, let's say, a math over here, and then we use a greater than, and then we maybe do something like this. So we only get like a few of these and then we lower our randomness. So we get like little, little pixels just moving around. We can up the scale like this. So we have nice and easy over here. And let's put this a little bit closer. So it's like, let's say minus five. Cool, cool. To get like some extra depth into that, all we need to do is take, take all of this, all of the stuff we just did and just duplicate it. And then we go over here to our value, making it a little bit lower. Let's say minus one is good. And then over here, just duplicate another math and go to add, maybe clamp, and then just add these two together. Now when you look around, there's like an extra layer. If you look at this, it's like an extra layer down here. And if we just up the scale a little bit, maybe we can make that a little bit more extreme, something like this. So it looks a little bit more deeper. And then we can just do that again. We just tag all of these duplicate them, change it over here. So it's maybe minus 3.5 and then up the scale a little bit and then add that again to what we have. Oop, get even more depth, more pixels, more stars. Ooh. We can use that to drive all sorts of very, very interesting effects. All right, so now that you know how that works, I hope you create some really, really cool effects. Um, like I said, there is a little Gumroad link in the descriptions if you just want to grab the note group for this. Um, if you want to know, just because I just remembered, you can actually put a little, wait, actually, let me, let me just control Z this until we only have one layer left there we go so if you want to like offset your your individual layers just in case there is some kind of weird repetitions that you don't want you can simply add a, a not a vector math i'm sorry no not a vector math we want a regular math note and you can simply add to basically give yourself like an offset here and the same over here for the other direction. So we get the two directions. All right, cool. That's it for me. I hope you have fun with this one. And I see you guys next time. Bye-bye.